Hello YouTube, Sandre here. This is an updated version of the old video that I have uploaded, because it seems like people were getting the wrong impression from the last video I made. And I've decided to add an addendum towards the end. Now please enjoy this updated version. Hello YouTube, Sandre here. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that is very controversial and very much contested from all sides in the scientific arena. What I'm going to talk about is the notion of just how much of IQ is heritable and how much is due to environmental influence. I'm not going to talk about the topic in general. However, what I am going to do is talk about a certain paper that I have seen being shared around in discussions online. Usually from people within the alt-right, for instance, who push this paper as some kind of evidence that IQ is in fact mostly or at the very least 50% inherited. Now I recently decided to take a look at this paper properly and see what I could find. Whatever the result would be from my analysis, it would be educative. If the paper is valid, well then yes, we have more knowledge about the heritability of IQ, but if the paper isn't valid in the way it's constructed in arguments, well then that's educative too, then we know what kind of argumentative trappings to avoid. Basically what I'm saying is, I looked into the paper as an academic, regardless of the results that I would find. Now before I begin with my analysis of this paper, let me just give you some pre-info that you should keep in mind before you go on to my analysis. This paper has been pushed in discussions to suggest that specific genes are responsible for high intelligence. I just want to make this clear to anyone who is pushing this notion that is simply not true. Specific genes for intelligence isn't really well supported in genetics at all. There are some genes we know that are essential to the ability to form a higher intelligence, such as genes dealing with dendritic spine formation and density. Examples are MECP2 along with methylation of DMTI-3. We also know that some genes are definitely involved regarding dementia being developed in certain individuals, which in turn can affect your intellectual performance. But the notion that there is a strong genetic case to make for the idea that specific genes have been found to lead to high IQ is simply not true. There is no such case to be made at all. The evidence is very much lacking. Now I will go on to my analysis of the paper. The paper is called Genome-Wide Association Studies Establish That Human Intelligence is Highly Heritable and Polygenic. Notice the word polygenic, because we're going to get back to that in my analysis. In the paper, they describe that to find out as much as possible about possible genetic differences, they analyzed about 550,000 single nucleotide polymorphisms. The sample group was about 3,500 adults. The age group ranges from teens to people of 90 years old. The nations from which the sample is taken from are the UK and Norway. These people also took several tests designed to measure IQ. I want to stress that no specific genes associated with higher IQ were found in this study, just like any other. I should also note that they make it clear in the paper that single genes really aren't going to have much of an effect on intelligence. They would need a much larger sample size to detect any such small effects. Like I said, they used about half a million locations. And they wanted to see just how much genetic similarity each subject has to every other one. Now what they found was that those who tested higher on IQ were genetically more similar to each other than those who scored lower in intelligence. And by their own conclusion, roughly half of the variation in intelligence between individuals could be attributed to underlying genes. So in other words, thousands of genes all individually contribute a very small amount to one's intelligence. 
However, like I said earlier, exactly which genes these are has not and cannot be determined by this method. Now we get to my own critique of this paper. Problem number one. The participants were mostly older adults, some of them born as early as 1921. And this is clearly a biased population. Why, you may ask? Let me explain in as simple terms as possible. For a study like this, you want as much generality as possible. You want the results to be as applicable as possible to the wider population. The problem is, a lot of these individuals aren't representative of the general population. These people are obviously very healthy, probably also mentally healthy. So to summarize, this is not a good group for generality. Problem number two. This is a non-random sample due to the selection criteria of the study. Hence, the study population is, well, inherently biased. This is another objective flaw that one has to concede if one wants to push this paper for the argumentation that, well, genes decide half of IQ. Problem number three. Only a small subset of the single nucleotide polymorphisms in genomes were sampled, and most of them weren't actually in the genes that may affect intelligence. And such, the quantitative estimate is not at all predictive of a larger population. By the paper, there is a prediction of about 50% variation in intelligence within the sample population. Yet, this would only foresee about 1% of variety in IQ among the population in, for instance, Northern Europe. Problem number four. The study is only applicable to IQ in populations they study. It should be noted that the study is very much only applicable to IQ in populations that they actually studied, and it has absolutely nothing to offer about differences between groups. Hence, for people in discussions to use this paper to in any way argue that this somehow shows that some groups compared to others have an inherent genetic edge to have high IQ is fundamentally dishonest. Problem number five. No corrections in regards to socioeconomic background has been achieved, as we couldn't even avoid ending up with a disqualifying sample group with an incredibly high bias to begin with. Now I have a lot more critique to lay against this paper, such as me questioning the validity of the IQ test itself to begin with, but that's an entirely different topic deserving of its own video, which I will make in the future at some point. Addendum. The base level, meaning ordinary levels of cognitive function, are very much of a genetic thing regardless of environment. However, the enhanced aspects of intelligence, uh, lifting someone above the norm is where things are unknown. Upbringing and nutritional intake in early childhood, as well as multiple other factors, play an enormous part. On top of that, aspects which enhance memory and comprehension of concepts involves literally hundreds of genes all working together, each one having its own very modest effect. Some enhance the effects of other genes, making their effects much more prominent. There is, in other words, a collaborative mechanism at play, which might very well be impossible to fully comprehend. Citing the geneticist. It's kind of like bricks in a house. The better each brick is, the better the house holds up, but one single brick isn't going to make the house go from okay to awesome and vice versa. There's a few genetic components which are critical in early childhood, like BDNF, which promotes neural growth and dendritic spine formation. When neurologists talk about neuroplasticity, they're often talking about the spines. Spines have incredible propensity to shift. It can literally take seconds for them to change. So genes that affect the maturity of spines are critical towards increasing connections between brain segments, also stabilizing shaky signals in a single neuron so that the signals don't get wacky further down the line. For example, let's say a few dozen neurons fire off a signal involving forming a memory for a test, and they're trying to enhance this pathway, but you've got shitty myelination in that cluster. Well, the signal can lose strength as it heads down the axons and the memory doesn't form as strongly. But, if you have lots of spines bridging the gap between these individual neurons, they'll stabilize the signal and even enhance it. 
So yeah, it's little bits from a combination of many genes that can push someone up the ladder noticeably. How much of that is motivated from the external stimulus of things like good education, family and friends? We don't know is the answer. And that has always been the main point of these videos of mine regarding IQ and heritability. I've tried to make it clear to my detractors so as to make it harder to strawman my position, but still I need to just spell it out. I am not denying the role of genetics behind intelligence. I am merely pointing out that we do not know how much genetics plays a part. It could be half, as this study suggests, or it could be more. However, no evidence exists to claim that it is half or more. I hope you have been enjoying this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. The next video is going to be about false correlation in twin studies regarding IQ. Thank you for watching. Bye!